All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about parallelogram theorems, and we're going to uh, do this proving a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We've talked about properties of parallelograms, but a lot of those properties come from theorems in which there, there was some type of proof to them. So the very first part here is called the parallelogram opposite sides converse theorem. It states that both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, I was on a roll and then didn't get to the writing part. All right, there we go. So if opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. This helps us because then those two lines, or those lines that you see, will be parallel to each other. All right, next up, we've got a parallelogram opposite angles converse theorem. So the first one was about the opposite sides. This one is about the opposite angles. If both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so opposite sides are congruent, it's a parallelogram. Opposite angles are congruent, it's a parallelogram. Um, again, these are things that you've seen before. We're just putting them to theorems. Now, opposite side parallel and congruent theorem. So this is one that it's uh, a little bit different from what you've seen, but it uses the same principles. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral um, are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And it's gotta be the specifically the same exact sides in order for this to work. You can't just say that one side is parallel, the other side is congruent, so it's a parallelogram. It has to be both the same side, is the same two sides are congruent and parallel. And then our last part, if the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, okay, there's that word where you cut the two equal halves, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So again, sides, opposite sides congruent, opposite angles congruent, two sides congruent and parallel, or diagonals bisect each other. These are all different things that make up a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral is a special, um, uh, or a, a make up a parallelogram. A parallelogram is a special type of quadrilateral. It's not the only one that we'll talk about. We are going to do this proof and then one more example, and then that's it. I'm actually gonna lead you step-by-step step through this proof um, you're not really going to see anything quite like this, but I want to show you the reasoning behind why, um, like why these theorems were mainly created. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that a theorem is something that has to be proven. Uh, so we've got a given, which is AB is congruent to CD, BC is congruent to DA. Uh, ABCD, we want to prove it is a parallelogram. The first thing that we want to do is draw a diagonal AC to form uh, triangle ABC and uh, triangle CDA. Next, it says use side, side, side congruence theorem to show that triangle ABC is uh, congruent to triangle CDA. And then we're, last, we're gonna use alternate interior angles to show opposite sides are parallel, alternate to your angles, okay? Uh, these are all things that are put into the proof. So essentially I've just given you and read out like the steps in order to prove, but I wanna show you just kind of how the statements and reasons go. So the very first thing is part A. We've got our given that we put in, and then we drew in a C because through any two points, there exists exactly one line. 
Next, we want to note that AC is congruent to itself. This is part because of the reflexive property. Okay, so that's step, that's that step one. Step two then um, is using the side, side, side congruence to show that they're congruent. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle CDA, uh, okay, where it's, we're looking at this right here, this part, and we're using it down here in letter B. And that's because of side, side, side. Now, because we've proven the triangle congruent, anything inside of that is going to be the CPCTC part. The congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So C, P, C, T, C for the angles. Because those angles on the inside are congruent, they're alternate interior angles. So those lines are parallel because of the alternate interior angles converse. This is a theorem. And then last, the quadrilateral in itself is a parallelogram because all of this forms a definition of a parallelogram. Like I said, you're not going to see anything quite like this on an exam, but I just wanted to show you like the reasoning behind it. And I know you guys can clap. Uh, the reasoning behind it, like why, why these different theorems were created and how they use things that you've seen before to piece together the puzzle. So now for the good stuff. Okay. Using algebra in order to solve. So what values for X and Y make the quadrilateral a parallelogram? If you remember, parallelograms have to have congruent sides. So if we were solving for X, we could take PQ and set it equal to SR or X plus 9 equal to 2X minus 1. Solve. Subtract x, you get 9 is equal to x minus 1, add 1, and x is equal to 10. From there, we can use that x and substitute it in for here to get 10 plus 7 is equal to 17. That would mean that y then was also equal to 17 because opposite sides are congruent. Questions at all? Simple two. All right. Mr. Stewart, off topic just a little bit, but still math-wise. Yes. Are we supposed to keep all our notes? Because my notes folder has officially broken. That will be a great question that I could explain off video to you. Um, let's go ahead and do this actually, the checkpoint off video, and then we'll stop for today.